Hi, I'm Pagan. I'm a recruiter and that means I help connect graduates to employers. So throughout the day, I must speak to dozens of graduates about their careers. They come to me for advice and guidance on how to break into their dream career. And I'm happy to say that I'm always able to help. Throughout these conversations, I've noticed a few trends. So a few key areas that everyone, regardless of experience or aspirations, has questions around. To help, we've launched a video series that covers these key areas. So first up, we're going to cover one of the most important parts of the job seeking process, the CV. We all know what a CV is, but why are they so important and why do we need to take them so seriously? There are many reasons, but through experience, I know that there's only one that really matters because they make an employer's life easier. Good CVs efficiently display relevant information in an easy to digest format. If you do that, then you're putting yourself in a great position to land an interview. For the next section, we're going to take a look at a CV we received recently that impressed us and go through it section by section. So to start, this may seem obvious, but we begin with a name and contact details. So many hiring managers will print out CVs and keep them in a stack. You want to make it as easy as possible to find your name in a stack. So make sure you put both a phone number and an email address at the top. And maybe instead of including your full address, consider adding your closest city or maybe the first three letters of your postcode. This gives the hiring manager a chance to understand your commute, where this is applicable. An eye-catching headline can help summarise your experience in education in a neat sentence. Not only does it set the tone for the rest of your CV, but it gives you an opportunity to drive home your most important message. Your personal statement is your synopsis and it will serve as your initial sell, rounding up your most impressive experience. This is a section we don't see often, but a good section nonetheless. So using bullet points makes it easy to digest your key skills. Matching these skills up to the skills listed in the job description is a really quick win to help put you above the competition simply by highlighting those key skills. You'll have done a lot while you're at university. You'll also do a lot as you start to make your way through your career. This section is for some of your more notable achievements. So good that you don't want hiring managers to have to read through your entire career and education history to find. For these achievements, you want to consider the role you're applying for. So any examples of where you've taken an old process and made it more effective are great examples to use. You can also feature something not work or education related if you think it stands you apart from everyone else. So in this example, this CV lists fully trained Samaritan listener, which shows us that this candidate is willing to spend their time volunteering and have a great bit of extra training. With your most recent career or education example feature first, this section will build a picture of who you are and what you can bring to the team you've applied to join. So in this section, we recommend laying out your career history like this. The name of the company, then your title, followed by your tenor. Then you want to give a brief summary of your position there. Then a list of key contributions. These are usually the things that you're most proud of, like your annual revenue, if it's a sales position, or channel growth, if you're in marketing, for example. For this section and the key achievement section, make sure you're using active verbs like delivered, led, drove, initiated or increased to further reinforce your proactive nature. Also, make sure that you try and make the experience you chose to share as measurable as possible. Numbers and figures help make your experience more tangible. Not everyone will understand what you're explaining, but everyone will understand the results of a 500% increase of, of subscribers in the first six months of a project launch. Also, make sure that you try to make your experience you chose to share as measurable as possible. Numbers and figures help make your experience more tangible. Not everyone will understand what you're explaining, but everyone can understand the results of a 500% increase of subscribers in the first six months of a product launch, for example. A really important part of listing your career and education history is also to explain the context of these examples. So if you are working whilst also studying, you need to directly mention that on your CV as it can show soft skills. So don't skip things like traveling. Long periods of traveling demonstrate more soft skills like resilience and independence, for instance. Keeping your CV to a couple of pages isn't easy. 
Here are a few tips which should help you keep your CV short, focused and relevant. Extra tip number two, your experiences don't exist in isolation. Sometimes when we look at a CV, we treat each bit of experience as something that happened in isolation, when in reality, these things often overlap. We often have to work while we're studying and we often have to take on additional responsibilities like caring while holding down a job. Explaining the overlap and context around these bits of experience can demonstrate a lot of really important soft skills to a hiring manager and can be the difference between not hearing back and getting an interview. So if you've worked while studying, make sure you highlight that on your CV. Extra tip number three, accept that you're not the finished article. When you come out of uni, you're very aware of your lack of experience. I certainly was. So when I came to write my CV, I was finding myself looking for anything to put in it, just so it felt long. This was often a relevant experience just because I wanted to come across as being the most complete and rounded professional. Often, it's better to use the space to explain your ability to pick up new skills quickly or your willingness to embrace difficult projects or your resilience when something doesn't go your way. Create different CVs for different groups. So you stand a better chance of success if you tailor your CV for the role. But often it's not time efficient to create a CV for every single role you're applying for. Instead, try to break your job search into groups so you can tailor your CV to those different groups. This is easier on your time, but also the hiring managers see a more relevant candidate. So, for example, you might define two different groups that fit your experience as sales and recruitment. You create two different CVs with different experiences and wording that you then send into those two different roles. And that wraps it up. So if you follow the QR code on the screen, you'll be taken to the Career Support Network group where you can find more tips like these and other job seekers as well. You'll also find a CV template we've used in this session for you to take and adapt to your own experience. Thanks.